My name is Erica Gammon. Welcome back, or welcome if this is your first visit to my channel. In this week's video, I'm going to talk about something that people sometimes uh, run into when they're using InDesign, with their images being a little fuzzy or a little jaggedy. So let's jump on into InDesign and see what that's all about. One question I get asked a lot is why do my images in InDesign, when I'm working on them, why do they look jaggedy or pixelated or blurry? And that just has to do with a setting that's on by default for viewing images on screen in InDesign. So none of this affects how anything will be printed or how it will look when we export it to PDF. This is just for how it looks on screen. So if I place an image in InDesign, I've placed this image here on this page, it didn't actually put the entire image into the InDesign file. It actually put a placeholder. And that's why we have things like the links panel where I have that image in here and it remembers where the actual file is. And that's because when I go to print or export to a PDF, it's going to grab the original and put that information in that file. But while it's sitting in InDesign, it's just a placeholder. So to save processor time, which isn't really such a big deal anymore, but it can be depending on the size of your file and how many images you have, they put it at a low resolution screen resolution. So approximately 72 DPI. Um, but don't get too hung up on that. It just means that it's giving you a low resolution version for you to look at that will also keep your um, file moving quickly when we scroll around and we add and start uh, manipulating the, the items on the page. So where that's all controlled is under the display performance. So let me just show you what I mean what we're looking at. So I have this image and it looks pretty decent at fit to page size, but let's zoom in a little bit. So if I just zoom in a little, I'm not gonna zoom in too much because if I zoom in really large, then of course I'm going to see pixelization. But even at this, I'm not even at 200%, but 175% here, I can see that there's a lot of pixelation in my image. And that can be worrying because I thought, surely this was a high resolution image that I had acquired to put into my document. So this is where people start to freak out. Well, the fact of the matter is I can look in the links panel and I can see that it is actually a 430 uh, PPI effective resolution. So that's plenty probably for anything I would need, um, but it looks terrible on screen. And that's because the actual resolution is 72. And that's what it's showing it at uh, on screen here anyway, is 72. So what I need is a way to see that clearly. So I'm gonna zoom out just so I can uh, be on the page and not have anything selected. So I'm just gonna make sure nothing's selected and I'm gonna right click or control click on the page, anywhere on the page, and come down to display performance. Now display performance, we can see that it's set to typical display. We have three settings. There's fast display and if I tell it fast display, this is going to change the display for all the images in this entire document. So I'm gonna say fast display. Well, that gives me a gray box for all of my images. And that's basically pretty useless here today. We don't need to do that. Obviously we can't see our images. Um, this is great if we're just trying to see the layout of something and do have to scroll around and we do have a lot of images and we don't want the processor to get bogged down with processing those. I don't use that very often. But I can come back to display performance and I can choose high quality display. Now I've just told every image in this document to be shown at high quality. So let's zoom back into about that same amount that we had before, and I can see that it's a lot clearer. I can come up here to my view menu instead and choose the same thing, display performance. I can turn that back to typical display, so you can see the pixelization that's there, and we'll switch that back to high quality display. So you can see the difference, now I can see it clearly. The problem is now it has to render every image in high quality as I'm working. So if I go to scroll, let's just scroll across this image. As I scroll, you can see that it's pixelated again. I'm still scrolling the image. When I let go of my mouse, it re-renders it into that high quality resolution. So you can see where that might get bogged down. But the great thing is I can choose individually which images need to be shown at high quality or fast or, or typical, whichever. So I'm gonna right click or control click again on the page, choose display performance and turn it back to typical display. The other thing you wanna make sure of in that menu is that you have allow object level display settings checked. It should be on by default, but it's easy enough to accidentally uncheck it. So make sure that's on because what that's telling it is that I can now override each individual item with its own setting. So now I have it set to typical overall. 
I believe. Let's double check. Typical setting. But I want this particular image to show in high quality because it's the one I'm working with. So I'm going to click on that image and right click or control click on that image and tell it instead of use view setting, which is the default, I'm going to tell it to use high quality display just for that particular image. So now as I zoom in, it's nice and high quality. Of course, at some point, if I zoom in too much, I will start to see pixelization, obviously. But um, when I'm working, you know, at 100, 200, even 300 percent, it's going to look a lot better. So I've just told it that image needs to be set at high quality. But my other images are still set at that typical setting. So I still have pixelization, including on items like this, which is a vector artwork. And even that is jaggedy here. And that's because by default, it, it doesn't differentiate between the raster and the vector um, by the default settings that are here. It says, oh, you want a uh, typical display? Automatically show it at 72, which is not something I really need when it comes to vector. Vector images are created mathematically. The computer, you know, that's what it does. It does math and it does it really well and really fast. So having the vector images show at lower re resolution really gains me nothing in the speed department as far as the processor is concerned. So I'm going to make a couple changes to the default settings that are here. So to change the settings, what it means to be the fast display, the typical display, or the high quality display, I'm going to change that in my preferences. Under a, on a Mac, it's under the InDesign menu, InDesign preferences. On a PC, it's Edit preferences. Both of them, we're going to scroll down to Display Performance. And I'm going to tell it, first of all, what's the default view? When I open a new document, start a new document, what is the view that I'm seeing? Well, typical seems to make the most sense. It's easy on the processor, but it also doesn't give us gray boxes. So let's leave that set as is. I also want to make sure that I preserve those object level display settings. Anything that I've set individually on an item, I'd like that to stay. And then I can adjust the view settings for each. Let's first look at the fast. Now I'm not going to make any changes to fast. Fast is fine. Everything is set to grayed out or be off. So transparency, these are our drop shadows, feathered edges, uh, any, any transparent effects, um, any transparency actually in the image itself, set to be off. So you're not even going to see that. Everything's grayed out in vector or raster, doesn't matter. Also, we can set the greeking if we decide uh, what, uh, what size type is so small that we don't need to render it as type anymore. We're just going to greek it out and give it a, a gray square as well. We can set that lower if we want. I'm going to jump to the other end of the spectrum, which is the high quality, and all the sliders are to the right. So raster images, show those at high resolution. Vector graphics, show those at high resolution. Also in transparency, show that at the best quality that you can. So again, it's going to be a little slower, or can be a little slower, um, because it's rendering everything at high quality. But the middle one is the one that I tend to change. So typical, that's the one that's on by default. I want the raster images to be set to proxy setting. That means that 72 DPI, uh, just on-screen resolution. That's what I want my raster images to look like. And with the transparency, I don't need it to be all the way super high quality, but I'd like it to be a little bit further to the right, so it's me set at medium quality, so that my drop shadows look good, my feathered edges, etc. But what I am going to change is my vector graphics. I'm going to move that slider all the way to the right because, again, there's no need for vector objects to be shown at a proxy resolution. Show those at high resolution, and we're good to go. I can also change the, Greek set, the Greeking settings here. Maybe we we'll make it 6. 6 is generally what I keep it at. All right, so I can go ahead and I enable my anti-aliasing for my higher resolution ones as well, for typical and high resolution. So I'll just say OK to that. Now, even though I am set, at typical display, and I don't have any individual overridden settings here, it says use view setting, which means I'm using the typical, which I set for the whole document, I'm still seeing it at high resolution. I'm seeing my vector image at high resolution. No matter how far I scroll in, I've got a nice clean and crisp edge to my vectors. If I jump to that second page and I look and I can zoom in here, and that looks pretty good, and that's probably because I have it set for that high resolution, high quality display for that image. And let's jump back to the first one, and we can see that that's not very clear, and that's because I'm telling it to use the view setting, which we have set at the typical view. 
So again, keep in mind, this is just for how the images look on your screen while you're working and won't affect the output in any way. To check that, we want to always go to the links panel, click on a link and make sure that our effective resolution is high enough for our needs. Don't trust the display that's there. So turn it off if you need to uh, zip around a lot, have a lot of photos and kind of just test your machine and see how, you know, how much it can handle before it, you know, drives you insane. Well, hopefully that solved that mystery for you and use the display performances to see things in high resolution. If it helped, be sure and click like on this video and also be sure and subscribe to my channel. I put new videos out every Wednesday and I wanna make sure you know when those are up and ready to go. Also, let me know in the comments below what sorts of things in InDesign trip you up or confuse you. Just those little things like the display um, that we just looked at. You know, what sort of things kind of, I don't know, just kind of frustrate you. Let me know in the comments below and we'll see if there's a workaround or maybe there's just a setting that needs to be changed. You can also contact me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and also Snapchat at Erica Gamut. I also have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash learn with Erica. So head on over there and I put little tips and tricks and I have freebie Fridays, most Fridays, try and put a little free goodie for you up online there as well. Wherever you contact me, be sure to use the hashtag learn with Erica. That's it for now. So until next time, bye-bye.